on this episode of My Lash Two Brain Cells. The concept, like how did we come up with the idea of half coffee shop, half salon suites? It was, we're just really smart, you guys. <laughs> we're just really smart. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Just try being really smart and then you'll, no, I'm kidding. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My, my Lash, Lash Two, two brain, cells. brain Cells. I'm your host, Maddie Morris. And I am also your host, Elliot. Please put your shirt away. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, what, this? I oh, think what, your this? shirt is stupid. Oh, what, this? For those listening on audio, I got a very cool shirt that I'm very proud of. <laughs> So stupid and the the <laughs> autofocus on, on who the else, camera who else like puts a cute outfit on and lets their husband dress <laughs> themselves and they just put on the randomest things <laughs> i'm like i told madison i was like i'm like those uh toddlers who you're like okay we're going to a fancy restaurant and then and they, they insist- were like spider-man pajamas that's literally <laughs> elliot uh no i got my hasbula shirt and Ellie, it. it's so funny. Elliot will always be like, Madison, dress me, like pick an outfit for me today. And then most of the time I will. And then <laughs> most does. of the time I will, I will say. And like sometimes I just won't, obviously. Like he'll wake up before me or whatever. And when he dresses himself, I'm like, what are you wearing? And Elliot's like, this is why. This is, this is just the clothes I have. <laughs> I'm dead. Well, we have a really special episode for you today, you guys, because we have officially owned Lightheart Studios and Coffee Shop, the physical space, the salon suites for one year now. Happy Yay! birthday to Lightheart. Thank you for the happiest Thank year you for the that. happiest year <laughs> of my life. That's and true. We've been holding off making an episode like specifically about salon suites and us owning salon suites and yeah. all that sort of thing because we wanted to wait until the one the year. The one year mark. And I have always been hesitant Sink to get- Sink or swim. That's yeah. how we know. And we've always been hesitant to give advice or talk about lessons we've learned or any of that stuff around salon suites because we wanted to give ourselves enough time that we had time to learn those lessons, make those mistakes, you know, have those wins, all that sort of stuff so that we could accurately give you the full picture of what life has looked like now that we have owned our space for one year now. Mm -hmm. And I will just say it has been the best year of my life. Has it been the happiest year of your life? It has been the happiest year of my life. (laughs) It has been the happiest year of my life. I honestly owning Lightheart and having this physical building filled with renters and the coffee shop and everything like that. Like it has number one. It's bussing, no cap. Okay, please stop. (laughs) It is physically cured my burnout from my career yo that's the solution it has any of you are dealing with burnout just invest a (laughs) couple hundred grand in a build out and boom cured building the place burnt me out but like a year in i have a been able to retire from full-time service providing which is huge you know and then two it's given me peace of mind that i you know love who i'm surrounded with every day Um, I get to make like meaningful relationships with all the renters. Like it's the best thing ever. So for me, owning the salon suites and the coffee shop has been the best decision of my entire career. Facts. Yeah. Tell me how the last year has been for you from Elliot's point of view. From Elliot's. How's it going in Elliot's world? Yeah. We should have a jingle. Let's talk about Elliot. Elliot tells you how he's feeling. Yep. That's going to be, that's our, that's the segment that we're in today. How has the last year been for you? Uh, It's been awesome. I freaking I'm having a great time. It's good. What's your favorite part? My favorite part. Um, my favorite part is coming to the coffee shop and getting free coffee every day of my life. That honestly has been really. That's the really best. clutch. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> walk through like kind of what the numbers have looked like, but you know it, that's not including the free coffee every day. Which <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you ask Dave Ramsey, that's got to equal what like a hundred thousand dollars over the course of a year. Yeah. Like, have you guys seen those memes where it's like you're buying a Starbucks coffee and Dave Ramsey is just hiding in the bushes? like watching just you like, just disapproving just you are destroying your financial future <laughs> by getting a little treat at I starbucks i will say it's so cool to like uh not have to open up shop every day because when i was working as a full-time lash artist you know i would come in every morning i would turn the lights on i would unlock the door i would like clean my room and ster- sterilize all my tools but now it's like i come into work 
And the coffee shop opens at 7 a.m. I typically get here around 11 or so. And so there's already people having dates, enjoying their drinks, working in our open seating. Mm -hmm. The renters are already at work. It's just the coolest thing to be able to walk in somewhere that I'm not 100% in control of. You know, my favorite thing is when I walk in and I'm like behind people in line or like sitting at the bar or something. And then people are like, oh, my gosh, this place is so cute. And (laughs) And I'm I'm like, like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it is the best thing ever. Sometimes Ellie and I are incognito and we sit down and we just listen to people <laughs> like hype up the space for a while. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to answer two of your biggest, th- three really of your biggest burning questions because we get a lot of questions about Lightheart. Yep. And I don't think we've ever really fully answered them publicly. I don't think so. Um, so number one, people have a lot of questions about um, Lightheart as a concept. Like how did we come up with the idea of half coffee shop, half salon suites. It was, we're just really smart, you guys. <laughs> we're just really smart. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Just try being really smart, and then you'll. No, I'm kidding. Um, we, the way it originated was we wanted to open the salon suites first, right? And um, one of the issues that we personally had with a lot of salon suite concepts. Is that you? When you walk in, it's like a you walking into a hallway, and it's like you don't know where to go, and it's silent. And, and there's like, just a TV screen with lists like, and yeah, lists and lists like of a businesses list of within businesses, there. And I'm just like, oh, where do no I, one's I don't greeting know. you? And it's like it's like not a nice experience from like a client perspective. And we were like, okay, how can we elevate that? How can we make that better? Um, and we we're like, okay, well, you know, we could just have a receptionist in the front, but then we'd have to pay a receptionist like every day to be there in the front, like greeting people. Which can also be kind of awkward. Which can also be kind of awkward, <laughs> especially know? if they're just silent and they're just sitting there and then you walk in and they're like, hello, welcome. Who are you here to see? Who are you then here to see? Then it kind of feels like a little more like a salon. Yeah. And so we were like, okay, well, you know what is a really nice experience for just about everybody? Coffee shops, maybe, and I mean- who doesn't love coffee shops? I love coffee shops. Yeah. Ellie and I, our first date was at a coffee shop. It Ellie used to go to the shop. same coffee shop every single yeah. day. I was there every day in college. Um, just like, you know, literally every other college student. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I I just loved coffee and I was kind of a nerd about it, had all my like uh pour over supplies at home and really liked uh, you know, like the science of it. And um, I, I really got into coffee when I was in college and I was like, oh, I really, oh, I taste mm, like the, the on the front of the palate. There is ve- <laughs> very citrus forward notes in this espresso. And People like, come over to our house and they see all of Elliot's like just spaceship equipment in the kitchen. And they're like, what uh, is he doing? I'm like, like is, I'm brewing coffee. <laughs> is he building the Mars is he rover? Making is methamphetamine? <laughs> yeah. Like, like Elliot really, really nerds out on coffee. So that was so, kind of the initial idea. So we were like, you know, we were thinking about it. We were thinking about it. We weren't like set on it. We were like, you know, this could be cool. This yeah. could be cool. Maybe we'll do that. Um, and then we were like touring spaces. We found this space that we're currently in. And um, we were like, you know, if we did decide to go for the the coffee concept, have the coffee shop be the front of the house, um, this would be a really good space for it. It's a corner space, lots of natural light. Um, it's in a strip mall that doesn't have any coffee currently. Very high traffic area. Very high traffic area. It's right next to a high school. It's like yeah. there's there a lot of things we're going for it for having a coffee shop there. And um, we had our friends come over um our one a uh, guy i went to high school with um they were visiting their family in arizona and they knew that we lived in arizona and um they they were just here for like yeah they uh, asked if i could like take them to the airport and i was like oh yeah sure and then i was like on the way over Elliot's to the that airport. friend guys he'll take anyone to the airport yeah you know you've been seeing elliot in 10 years he'll pick just, you up from the airport um, it's midnight and <laughs> and I was I was taking him over to the airport and I was like, hey, do you want to stop by this like place we're looking at? Because we're like, I was telling him like what we're up to. We're like, oh, we're trying to find this like studio space that we can lease out and then like rent out to other beauty professionals. Um, I'll show you the place we're looking at. And so I showed him. The windows were still taped up. Windows up. were taped up. It was all. It looked super ugly. Yeah. And um, I was. We were like in fairly early negotiations on the space we were like we just sent an loi no lease had been signed no lease nothing and we were like going back and forth on like terms and stuff and price and uh, we were like yeah we're like looking at this space we're considering it you know maybe think it could be cool um and we're thinking maybe we could put like a coffee shop in the front and then like offhand uh my friend caleb 
he enter new characters. Caleb, Caleb um, and Mariah. And Mariah, his Maybe wife. Maybe you've heard of them. Perhaps you've heard of them. <laughs> um, he was just like, oh well, I mean, if you put a coffee shop, we'll run it for you. I'm like, bro, you like. Ah, that's funny. That's, that's funny. You guys live in Minnesota. It so just, obviously, it was just a running inside joke. It was, that... It's just a joke. Yeah. And then um, we set up a thing for like, uh, was it like a couple weeks later, a month later? We went to Joshua Tree. And then when we were in Joshua Tree, they basically, we were talking about it more. And um, they were like, no, like, we're serious. Like, if you guys start a coffee shop there, we'll, we'll run it. And I was like, actually? Because that would be... That'd be kind of sick. Because here's the thing. Elliot and I loved the idea of having a coffee shop to replace a receptionist or just an empty yes. waiting area. We loved the concept. Yes. Listen, I don't know anything about coffee. I don't drink coffee. I don't like coffee. We, and we also were not in the position to have our full-time jobs be running a coffee yeah, shop. Yeah, like Elliot and I were never prepared to be baristas. We were completely going to hire out that portion of yeah. the business. Yeah, that was the plan was we would hire a manager. And we would just hire have baristas. it be like added value to the renters kind exactly of exactly we're like okay the numbers kind of work out it'll be close but yeah. you know but it, we were like even if the coffee shop you know just like above breaks even you know it's yeah, really it as a even, plus for the renters exactly and god had bigger plans yes as he, he does. did um and so then caleb and mariah i was like you know if you guys are serious about this like yeah that would be awesome and then um like a few days later caleb went back home to minnesota and he texted me and at this point we were like in deeper in negotiations for the space and we were like talking to them and we were uh we were going back and forth on terms still we hadn't signed the lease um we were getting fairly close to you know um they'd sent us a, a draft lease proposal and then we redlined stuff yeah. and then sent it to our lawyer and all that um but we had not signed yet and then caleb calls me up and he's like hey um I did drop out of college and we are going to move to Arizona in uh, next March. Um, and this is like October at this point. And I'm like, oh, oh, no. Like, we haven't signed the lease yet. Like, you you knew we hadn't signed the lease yet, right? And he's like, oh, yeah. But I mean, I feel like you guys are going to get the space, right? And I was like, I mean, now I guess we got to. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I guess we don't really have much of a choice. Um, so luckily, you know, we, we settled on uh, good terms uh, for the lease that we were both happy with. And um, we moved forward with it and we started the build out. And the build out took, you know, super long time. It was the like worst six, eight months of our lives. And then we finished the build out and then we opened. But isn't that crazy? Like that is how the idea bloomed. And we just had people that believed in it enough to like yeah. come alongside us and make the day-to-day -day happen yeah and so caleb and mariah from day one every morning they got up opened the coffee shop uh at night closed it down at night closed it down and elliot and i full-time so elliot and i's role is we full-time like manage the suites that yep. portion of lightheart yep. um and then we full-time run our education company now yep and um and so like the coffee shop is like caleb and mariah are it's their thing yeah it's truly. their thing we are like the financial partner we yeah. like paid for the equipment paid for the build out um we run the books you know um and when we open a second location we're gonna fund that too yeah um but then they like you know they're the like we we call it like the operating partners. Yeah, and we they... we do we do all the fun stuff together. We oh do, yeah, we do photo shoots together. We do trips together. We do planning oh together. Gosh. Yeah, like all that sort of fun stuff. Yeah, awesome. Like the four of us are completely included, so it's, it's awesome. It's it it's nice because we are all really good friends, and so <laughs> honestly, we just they're do my best friends together. in the entire world. Yeah, they're the best. Yeah. So. Love you, Caleb and Mo. Love you, Caleb and Ryan. Smooches. I don't even think they listen to the podcast. No, they definitely don't, but, you know, they're getting a shout out anyway. <laughs> okay. Number two, uh, people want to know, what are some lessons we have learned during the process of being open for one year? Um, and I have three. I have okay. three. Then you don't, This is my one. You kick this off. Okay. <laughs> you just sit back in my neck, you, baby. baby. So three lessons that I learned um, going from full-time educating and service providing to now being in a position of leadership and, um, you know, owning the suites, I learned three very important lessons. Number one is you do not have to rent to anyone. 
right? If you're a privately owned boutique salon suite and you're very much focused on community and a commitment to quality and, you know, a commitment to the comfort of your renters and clients and all that sort of stuff, you don't have to say yes to anyone that wants to rent from you. And when we first opened, I said yes to anyone that wanted to rent. And like, we've had amazing renters, but also um, we have amazing renters because I have said no to some people yes. renting and not just said no, but kind of just, and I've never been like, no, you can't rent here. Get out of here. Never. But during our tours, when we tour people, what, what they don't know is that isn't just a tour. It's an interview. Yeah. And I am kind of vetting their vibe, their business, like who they are, what they care about, what their personal values are, what their business goals are, all that sort of stuff. And if it puzzle pieces into the community that we've built, then that's someone that I would want to have as a part of the building. But as you guys know, a lot of you listening probably rent from salon suites. If you have one bad apple in the building, it ruins everything for Not everyone. Good. And a lot of the reason why we charge like a premium price to be in Lightheart is because you're paying for um, the community. You're paying for paying safety. for the vibes. You're really paying for the vibes. And, um, and so one of the ways that I do that during a tour is if someone comes in and their main focus is like, you know, I can tell that they don't have a solid business model. Like they're like, can you help me get clients? Can you help me like... You, you know mm -hmm, d mm -hmm. charge more can you help me do this can you help me do that like they just have no understanding of what they need to do for their business and they're like asking me to help with like the most basic of things um or if they are very much uh fixated on the price and like finding the lowest price of a suite possible then i would always say oh if the price per square footage is your number one priority there's definitely um more there's better options there's for you. definitely better options for you in the area you know because i always want to like emphasize we are not the most affordable if you're looking at like price per square foot Facts. And so I, it's not ever me saying no. It's me saying, I think that you're going to be better suited somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. Unless like your values really align with ours. Yeah, absolutely. And most people that come to take a tour, they, they, they get it. They get it. But, but some really you know, are, we weren't perfect though. We did let, you know, we, we, have we, not had a 100% perfect track we record. We have had a few bad apples. We've had a couple bad apples. <laughs> you know. However, who you however, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> I'm camera. looking at you. Get out of the camera. What if, what if we just beeped it out? Girl, what if I said, that, we've been what if I said their name? No, no. <laughs> no. Um, we've had renters rob us. We, yeah, <laughs> we we did, we did. Um, luckily we've only had like two. Um, that were we had one that was like not good, and then we had one that was like eh, you know. Mm -hmm. But the one that was not good, luckily they did not stay very long. Um, and it was. I think because we are so involved with the uh, space. Um, Caleb, you can come in. It's yeah, fine. you can come in. Guys, you're, this you're is good. Caleb. We were just talking Guys, about Guys, everybody Caleb. say hi to Caleb. Here, hi, Caleb. Poke your head in. Come here. Poke your head in and say hi. We were actually just talking about you. This is Caleb. This, this is, is Caleb, Caleb with the coffee shop. We, we actually just, were just talking about we you. We just gave you and Mo a shout out. And we're like, you guys don't listen to the podcast, so you'll never hear it. But <laughs> but <laughs> you did get one. <laughs> wow. I overheard behind the curtain. No, so Caleb, I know it's not me. No. Caleb comes in and we're like, so there's this guy, Caleb. He's so stinky. He's and so <laughs> bad. Yeah. We were talking about our bad apples. And we're like, yeah, the Caleb. Or yeah. The renters. Oh, you remember. Know. You remember. Censor this part out. Let's give some editing work. For <laughs> right? <TV. laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah bad apples yeah. start with <laughs> jess jones no. no i'm kidding we love jess jess, jess is, is our favorite no, um we have the best group of renters in the entire world yes, they're great but i definitely will say that i was not very discerning in the beginning because i wanted to fill the rooms as my top priority that was the thing we were so scared of not being able to fill the room so we were not as discerning at the beginning and luckily you know it worked out that we only like all of our renters except one ended up being amazing. And then we had one, you know, may may, may have stolen a couple grand from us. But it's water under the bridge. It's water under the bridge. It's um, not. <laughs> um, and, uh, but the, honestly, I feel like our average is pretty good that we've only had one in, yeah. the, in the year. And now we're in a place it's where it's like. It's truly only been one. It, and now what's really nice is we're in a place that it's like our renters, I think this batch is going to stay for a pretty long time. Like very stable, and now you know we just had two rooms uh, 
two of our renters leave because they needed to move to like bigger spaces. They needed to move to a different part of town. Yeah. Um, and we were able to film, you know, like instantly, like within a day. In 24 hours, we and both of them like, rented, I and don't the renters s- are phenomenal. Yeah, and they're both amazing. And I don't see that not happening in the future. So yeah. now we're like at the point yeah. where I think what we could have done better was be more discerning at the beginning. Mm-hmm. But since we like learned our lesson and now we are very like careful about who we rent to, it's now paying off in that it's going to be so easy to rent them out in the future because people see the community that we've built yeah. and they see how positive it is. And so like the kind of people who we want, want to rent here because yeah. now they see, oh, this is like such a positive place. Like there's no, there's no mean girls allowed. A I want to mil- be where there's no mean girls allowed. Percent. And I totally get like in the beginning, honestly, it was just, it was so exciting to have someone be interested because this was new to us. And yeah. so I'd be like, oh my gosh, come on in in five minutes, like put the deposit down, you know, we'll like get you moved in tomorrow. Like it was that momentum. But now like my priority is having renters that really, really, you know, are just such a comforting, um, that just really are are such a comforting presence mm. in the space mm. and our renters i i love seeing them every day like they are just the absolute best um number two another lesson i learned is that if you are the owner of the building you are in charge of the community that you create and by that i mean i am not involved in the business of my renters like at all because this is a salon suite this isn't a salon i know that my renters are incredible business owners I trust them to make the best decisions for their business. I don't micromanage what products they use. I don't micromanage their clients, their booking, whatever. That is all on them. I am completely here to offer support and mentor them for their business. But what my job is, is that my job is curating that community, Mm -hmm. right? Doing things like planning events, planning photo shoots, planning photo shoots, you know, kind of moderating the group chat um, and making the renters feel constantly involved and supported and that all starts with the ownership. Yeah. And I have worked in salon suites where the owner of the building didn't know who I was for months. I have worked in a- I would say you know who you are, but no. they probably still don't they know They probably who still you don't are. know who I am. Um, <laughs> but isn't that crazy? Like I, I worked in a building one time and months had gone by and the owner showed up to my suite and was like, oh, what's your name? Where are you from? Girl, I've been here for five months. <laughs> I live here. This is my place of work. This is my home. This is my but home. It's, it's so, but that's actually the norm for a lot of places and for a yeah. lot of salon suite owners. You know, they kind of just see it as like passive income, a passive business, which, you know, if that I'm sure if that works for you, great. No. But for us, our no. goal was to cultivate a community and, and mean that. And so I, I take my job very seriously. And I guess a lesson that I would tell anyone is if you are like a, a boutique salon suite owner, um, you're in charge of that. And so I would say have less involvement in the day to day workings of the renters because they're not your employees and have more involvement in supporting them and uplifting them and involving them and um, building a good culture and building a good culture a community. Yeah, a million because it doesn't matter how they run their business what matters is that it feels good for them to come in every day yeah and that's the, and that's the thing you have control over you know and um doing everything in your power to make sure that when they walk in they feel happy to be there and they feel like oh i wouldn't want to rent anywhere else because this place is the best um we kind of try and do everything we can to make sure that's the case and i think it's working so far and a lot of people that rent from salon suites um, and I just know this from years of research and being a renter is a lot of people that work in salon suites feel a sense of loneliness because they're all alone every day. They no longer have those employees or co you know coworkers mm-hmm. like that they would at a salon. Most people go from salon to suite suite rental, you yeah. know, and and being in a suite rental for the first time, there is kind of just a natural air of competition and loneliness and feeling like you know you don't know how to talk to anyone you don't know if you should talk to anyone you don't know to make friends or not like it's hard to get that vibe but if the owner of the building right like set a president like you know if there's a new renter they text all the renters hey guys this is a new renter welcome them if you see them around make sure to say hi you know like that would make you feel so much more like you belong there true and and that's really what we wanted it seems like the little things but those little things really add up and the third lesson that i wanted to stress to you guys is um prioritize your renters over anyone else your renters are the heartbeat of the building and they matter more than 
uh, more than a- anyone. Yeah. Right. I mean, if we have a renter Facts. and and be accessible to them and be understanding of them, and um, you know, I don't like hang out with the renters outside of work that much, outside of like kind of lightheart related events. Yeah. But I make it a point to talk to them and communicate with them and genuinely care about them the same way I would care about my friends because I do care about them that much. And um, I think the other part of that that's really important is like when you are talking to them, making sure you're having like real conversations and and not not talking about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not like just, you know, Oh, Hey girl, how's it going? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Um, Like actually talking like, Hey, how are things going? Like, how is your business doing? Like, do you need anything? Like, like a lot of our renters they have like new stuff they're working on and like we'll ask them we'll be like hey how's this like new thing you're working on like you're oh you're doing this course like tell me more about it like oh you're you're like starting a product line like that's awesome like mm-hmm. what are what are you doing right now like how's it going and just like being someone who's like actually you know interested in what they're doing in their business it's like a lot of people don't have many people in their lives who are like you know understand what they're doing and are like I mean, you guys know this if you work in beauty yeah. most people in your life don't care to understand your business they don't understand yeah and they don't care um and or they don't take it seriously yeah or they don't take it seriously and it's like you, so if you do and they look up to you yeah well especially because if you are like the owner of the suites it's like you are kind of like you're de facto in kind of like a position of power it's like you own the suites like they're renting from you it's like by showing that like you actually care about their well-being and like how they're doing and how things are going like i think it's really powerful and um yeah i think that's another reason that like people like renting here but also i think just just a small thing but i try to be 100 percent accessible to all the renters immediately yeah, yeah, yeah. so like if someone calls me at 10 p.m Oh yeah, and they if something say, goes wrong with like their space, I've or locked something, myself out. There's a leak. There's we are a, this. on the way. Someone clogged the toilet. You know, it, there, I mean, there's hundreds of people that come in and out of the space every single yeah. day. Like there are little things that happen that naturally mm-hmm. happens in any building. There's always gonna be stuff. Yeah. I make sure that we pick up the phone immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's the first. I mean, wh- whether we're on vacation, we're sleeping, whatever. I mean, that stuff yeah. is like immediate, so they know that they're supported. Because like I've rented places where literally the toilet was clogged for months. Ugh months i think everyone has listening and that's honestly that's another really nice part about having the coffee shop be the front of the house is that like the day-to-day operations like making sure there's soap in the bathrooms and making sure that like and like getting cleaning once a week and like making sure that everything's locked up and everything's open and the lights are on and like all these little things the coffee shop handles all all that because that's like vital to the operation of the coffee shop and then that also ends up you know being everything you need to do like day to day for all the renters as well. And so that really frees up us to like, we can leave town for, you know, a couple weeks because we know that like, we were so scared to go out of town the first time we did. Like, oh my because gosh, when yeah. we did the build out, we didn't travel besides me traveling for teaching oh, or no. for work or anything. Um, and so I remember the first time it's kind of like when you have a baby and yeah. like you leave to go on a weekend trip and you leave them with the grandparents and you're just like crying the whole time. I think the first trip we took the two of us, uh, well, probably when we went to like Huntington Beach or something. Yeah, it and, went, and stuff went wrong while we were there. Remember? Yeah, what happened? I don't. I don't remember. I just remembered like just little like we were on the things. phone. Like oh, oh no, it was like little maintenance things. Yeah, but literally, Ellie and I were so scared to we leave, were. like and just that anything would go wrong. But, but you know, we were able everything. We were able to fix everything over the phone or Caleb and Mariah handled it. And it was yeah. just like, it was awesome. Amazing. Was awesome. And, and also just having like a team on the ground in case, you know, you do have to like leave town or go on vacation. Exactly. Cause like now that we're at a place where, you know, we don't have to be here every day and I'm not even here lashing more than once a week. Ellie and I are able to go on very long. We're leaving for a month this year yep. and it's able to sustain itself because we put those systems in place. Like, okay, if this goes wrong maintenance, if this goes wrong, you know, this, if there's, you know, if they're doing pop-ups, they talk to Mariah. If they need help with the coffee shop, they talk to Caleb. If they need help with, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. air conditioning, music, training, merchandise, whatever, they talk to Caleb. Like, like everyone has a role yep. that they've naturally been designated to. Yeah. It's really nice. No, it's great. It's great. Um, Did you want to talk a little bit about... Oh, so one of the biggest questions that we get, and this is, this episode gets juicier as we go on, y'all. Yeah. But... Watch to the end. 
<laughs> for a surprise. Don't click away. <laughs> one of the number one things that I get asked about, and I have been asked about since we opened, is why would you choose to open a salon suites over opening a commission-based salon with employees? Because I was at a place where a lot of people wanted to work for me. They were asking yeah. to work for me. They, you know, I still get people sending in their, their you know, resumes. their resumes all the time, and I'm flattered by it. But um, why that hasn't even ever been on the table for me was a very um, – was a very intentional choice for me in my business. Because that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and I don't want to do it, girl. Um, for me, just being in the industry for, I mean, I was in the industry for seven years when we opened. And from what I had seen, and I know that it varies salon to salon and, and employee to employee, but people that are employees doing lashes, A, I know that that can provide a lot of comfort, a lot of uh, safety and everything. They don't have to handle the back end. And some people just aren't business owners and they, they want to just be service providers and do that. Not just, but th that's what they want to mm -hmm. do. Perfectly fine. What I had found in my experience is that people that worked for themselves um, cared more and yeah. just like took more initiative and cared about their education more and just like had that drive and I wanted to not micromanage people. And it's very, very difficult to find a team of employees that you're not micromanaging mm -hmm. and that and if they do they get do to a, a really good job. And if they do know? get to a point where they do a really good job, most of the time they leave. Right. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they see it's very enticing to be a business owner and not have to like owe any money. I mean, you make more money. You make more money. You make more money being independent. Yeah. And one, one of the things that consciously we wanted to do from like a branding perspective is we wanted to associate Lightheart with like the highest quality, you know, services, everything just like we wanted everything to be as good as possible associated with Lightheart. And, and I knew that if I hired people that were up to the standard of what I wanted them to be, they would be on their own. They wouldn't be working yeah, for me. Yeah. The people who we would want to hire exactly they're on they're independent already and they would so, never ever work for someone yeah, they wouldn't work for someone because they they have it figured out you know they're like i'm going to be independent i'm going to keep my money i'm going to charge what i want to charge i'm going to do things the way i want to do them no one's going to tell me yeah. what to do i'm going to be able to decide my schedule like there's so many benefits to going independent that like once you can most people do there are some really good artists who are like you know what i just like the stability of not having to think about it perfectly I just to work. fine that's i am totally not anti-salon or employee at all like do your no. thing i'm just talking about that's how i made my decision yeah <laughs> please don't cover me that's how i made my decision yeah no and well and the thing is too like I think that is a minority. Like the people who are very good at what they do, who are just like, you know what, I want the stability. I think once you get to like that level, I think the majority of people at that level are going to choose to go independent. And then a minority of them are going to choose to, you know, stay at the salon for the other perks of like being an employee, you know, but mm -hmm. I didn't want to, we didn't want to have to like, you know, try and find that minority of like people who are really good, who want to work at a salon because like, even though they're out there, a lot of the salons they're at, they're really desperate to keep them. So like they're already employed. You'd have to pay them a lot. Um, and and what I've been learning recently is like salon owners don't make a lot of money. Apparently, apparently, like we've been listening to podcasts and stuff, and salon owners are out here saying like it is not very profitable. And that was kind of one thing also that when we were looking into it and just like running the numbers for it, like okay, I don't want to do anything in my business that isn't profitable. Well. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> doesn't I make any sense to the business. I don't want to. But, like, even, but even when we were, like, running the numbers before we built this space, we ran the numbers of, like, okay, what would this look like if we had employees? And we're like, okay, we'd have to pay them, you know, about this much. We'd have to spend about this much on product. We'd have to spend about this much. Um, and then we just ran down it, and we were like, okay, and this is how much, like, each client will we'll be able to charge. We won't be able to charge what you charge because the people who are doing it we have to assume that their like uh their customer experience isn't going to be like to the level that you like provide customer experience at and you have to assume that like they're not going to care as much about your business as you do um and people so, care a lot about their own business yeah absolutely and so we're like okay we could probably charge about this much we'd have to pay this much and then we were running through the numbers and we're like we're comparing it to what we could make off of salon suites and we're like you know, it's looking like we could make more money just straight up off of doing salon suites than we could off of, you know, putting in like 10 times more effort to hire people and manage people. And also and from, oh, can I interrupt you? No, yeah, go for it. Can, from a, from just a, a place of how, what do I want to spend my days 
talking about? What do I want to spend my days doing? Like what kind of activities do I want to pour my energy into? Because this is our life. Like, and, and if you're a salon owner or a salon suite owner, it's your life. And what I really kind of thought like, okay, when you are a salon owner and you have employees doing eyelash extensions, there are a lot of things that you constantly have to deal with and talk about. And I know this because guys, I have hundreds of friends that own salons and salon suites. I know them. I know them. I know them well. I know what they struggle with. I know what they deal with. I know their successes. I get it. And the like the conversations that they have every day is like, this glue irritated this client. How do I respond to this message? This girl has bad retention. This client is annoying. This Sounds like my nightmare. But it never That's ever so bad. ends. And then even if you're at a place where the employees are like, say, they're very advanced artists or whatever, you know, the conversations are still how do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? You know, I'm not happy with getting paid this much. I'm, you know, there's, it's a, th- it's they're, a they're lot very, of, like, it's managing. Uh, you, you are trade. So it's, you are basically buying yourself a job as a manager. Yeah. And I, I don't want to manage anyone. I, do that. I want to be an artist. I want to have I want zero to, employees. I want to create. Exactly. I want to create and exactly. I want to live and I want to support. And, and the other thing is, too, is like we even before we started the salon suites, we knew that this education thing was going to be like a big part of what we did. And we're like, we don't want to commit to something that is going to take a ton of time away from, you know, time we can spend doing education. Yeah. And so that was another like I consideration. really care about education. Exactly. That was a huge consideration with doing this was like if whatever we do, it can't be something that we're like buying ourselves a full time job like we got. It has to be something that we can do, you know, spend maybe one two hours a week on and then we can like we don't have to do anything else other than that and salon suites you know worked that it worked out Mm -hmm. that that those low time commitment um still very profitable um i have a friend that manages a very popular salon and mm -hmm. there's 14 employees and they're in a group chat and the group chat is blowing up 24 7 and it is insane crazy and i mean she she comes to me just crying and she's like, the girls, I mean, they show up high. They show up oh, late. They show up. I do not think that's the move. And it's all on the manager, the receptionist, and the it owner. Is. The thing about. And obviously, most salons are run, you know, like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. But, but you know. It, but you it, still have to deal with that stuff. Yeah. Because you're still dealing with people. A million percent. And the more people you have to deal with, the more chances there are for one of those people to be crazy. And if you, you're dealing with enough people, you're going to deal with some crazy ones. Um, the, the thing, I think the, the thing in favor of like opening a spa or a salon or that sort of thing that like, I want to give, you know, both sides of the argument, a a fair shake. Um, I think the thing in favor of doing a, a spa is that it has more potential for growth. Totally. Like if you do a very good job of managing it, there is like with the salon suites as they are right now, there is a, a, a cap to how much money we can make off this space. And that cap is about $135,000 a year, $130,000 a year, $135,000, somewhere in there. Off of this size space, the way we have it set up, that is the cap of how much we can make. And we, it's very... It'd be very difficult for us to make more than that. There's some things we could do, like we try renting out the the front room more, stuff like that. But like 135 thousand a year, that's about where we're gonna cap out. With a spa in this same size building, the potential profit for it could be, you know, 200, 250, 300 thousand dollars totally. a year. They if, can be very profitable yeah, if you do a, an extremely good job of running it. Um, however, that is a full-time job. And so the trade-off of, you know, us having to spend full time on this space with the potential of making, you know, an extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, it was not worth it for us um when we look at the other stuff that we could be investing our time in. And also also just like what we wanted to do. Like we didn't want to do that. So even if we could make an extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year doing it, like I don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. No. So it's like it as you like make more, the like marginal utility of that money becomes less. And like the amount of stress that that would add into our lives doing that wouldn't be worth the extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Like it it just wouldn't. And so um 
so yeah, that was that was another uh, thing that like kind of drove us towards you know the salon suites. Yeah, that was all my questions. Good. Um, do you want me to like go over the like a uh, general overview of the numbers? Like, yeah, I think what you can kind of expect. I honestly think. Listen, this podcast has been so transparent since the beginning, and it so has. I feel like for the for the sake of transparency, a lot of people that are doing very like high leverage activities in my DMs have a lot of very valid questions about. You How know. much like I'm thinking if I'm someone who's thinking of opening a salon suite, I would love for someone who's in our position to tell me how much they're yeah. making. So and the whole I know point what of this expect. podcast is to help you guys. So, so, and you know what's so crazy is what? in my in-person group classes, there's usually one or two students in each group class that have like they want to open salon suites and they always ask me, they're like, do they actually make money or do you just like break even? And I'm like, break even. Whoa. Why would I do it? Why would you do it? What? No, Why? but people ask that question because nah, they've been girl. sold this lie yeah, that true. salon suite suites break even or make no money. Yeah. And a lot of that could be based on like their location and how well they're run and what they look like and like yep. how they're marketed and all that sort of stuff. But I, I get that question a lot. And so I think in this next section, we are going to talk about the numbers and kind of how it's done the first year. So, you know. So, okay, first year, if we go from like April 24th of last year to April 24th of this year, I just did the books this morning, so we got it. Um, we profited off of just the studios, renting out the studios, we profited $87,000. Um, now, that is without um, collecting money from like Madison's room, so we weren't, you know, you know, please don't, don't hate me, I did not have in our books, Madison's lash business paying the studio's rent, I even do, though technically we probably should have. I do get free rent. Madison gets free rent. So that is twenty twenty one thousand dollars a year um, that we're basically saving. And this is without the coffee shop. Um, so like if Madison wasn't in her room, we would be renting her room out for four hundred and twenty dollars a week. Um, and, uh, because that's what the room next to her is running out for. And, um, that would be adding $21,000 to our profit. So but I am renting it out this year. So you, well, yeah, you're renting it like day by day. It's yeah. like not like a full-time rent. If it was a full-time rental be 420. Um, and, and like last year to this year, it's not including like you renting it out yeah. one or two days a month, um, or one or two days a week. Um, and so that would make us 87, 97, 107. Um, and then we also took over this room that you see here. Um, which we could be renting out for another four hundred dollars a week, probably probably five hundred a week if we rented out the full room. But we, we just turned one of the studios into a podcast studio. We turned this studio. It's a it's a big studio. It's um it's about double the size. Feet. Yeah, it's double the size of our other studios. Um, and we basically took over the whole thing to run the podcast. And then um, our uh, and then Mia, who's our intern, she works out of here also. Um, and uh, we. Uh, so that would be adding another, let's call it 400 on the like low end. We could probably get probably like 500 for it um, a week. Um, and so that would be uh, 127 a year is what if we were actually renting out all the rooms, what we would be making. Um, what we actually collected was uh, 87. Um, and so basically Lightheart LLC, the uh, education company, is paying about – uh, thirty, uh, forty to forty thousand dollars a year in rent, um, to Lightheart Studios in order to you know for us to run this podcast out of here and film our uh educational content out of here and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So that's basically you know First what you year. could expect to to make. Um, I think one hundred twenty seven is probably a really accurate number. Um, for if like you're doing everything you know by the book. I'm just looking at you know what our actual take home profit was. It was eighty seven. And um, if it's 127, like say we were renting out all these, um, we're getting more value out of them by, you know, filming the podcast in here and filming our educational stuff because, you know, we're able to sell that for more than the like $40,000 that we'd be getting um, in rent. Um, and if we look at it as like 127 profit, that means that our build out was like 400 and it was around 400,000 so that means we would be paying back in a little over 3 years um is our uh, return on investment for the build out so a little over 3 years is our ROI on the space um which I'm happy with um especially because we did such an in-depth build out um and then additionally that is not including any of the profit we get from the coffee shop which um would be on top of that I honestly I don't even know 
what that is. I haven't run the, I haven't looked at the like year to date for the yeah, coffee shop. Yeah, we're only talking about the studios. Um, this is just the studios. Just and the so the, that, the other thing too with that is like if you weren't putting a coffee shop in the front there, that's another space that you could rent out that would be getting you um, more profit uh, potentially for the space. Granted, we do charge the coffee shop rent. So the coffee shop pays like $2,000 a month in rent. And um, so we collect that and that's considered, you know, some of the profit for the studios. Um, but uh, we do have like the seating area and everything for the coffee shop, which we could have turned into a room. But uh, we also wanted that as like a training room for Madison stuff. So all in all, because all our businesses are so mixed together with like the education and the studios and it's like we're using this space it does cut down on the profitability of the studios also we wanted some of the rooms to be like fairly large and so some yeah. of the suites are very large yeah we didn't op- and <laughs> so so if we like optimize the space for how many rooms that we could fill like we could have fit a crap we, ton of little like so six by nine rooms the thing is we could have but i think they would have been harder to rent out yeah and we couldn't have charged as much for them yeah so like maybe we could have like optimized and it a little I more i feel like we would have had too many renters we would have had too many renters. it would have been more to deal with because i've been in suites where there's just like everyone I feel is like, sandwiched in like yeah sardines. i feel like we struck a really good balance of yeah. like size and price um where i'm really happy with where we're at right now um and you know say we move the education stuff out of here into you know another another space um we could potentially, you know, if we moved Madison out of her room, moved all the podcast stuff, we moved the podcast, then this space, you know, we could expect to make, I would probably say 120 um, a year off of it, accounting for vacancies because our vacancy rate is really low um, and accounting for, you know, any uh, maintenance or repairs that we have to do, stuff like that. Um, but honestly, pretty good. I'm really happy with that return, yeah. um, and especially for the amount of time that we have to put into it. Um, it was primarily like we're getting that ROI because of the uh, capital investment that we took, that we put into the space and like doing the build out and dealing with all that. And it's not really we're not really working for that return in like a time sense. We're not like spending a lot of time every week on it. It's like, no, we put in the money up front to build this out, build a really nice space. We put a lot of work into the branding and making a really good community. And all of those are things that we're getting a very real uh, return uh, return on, like a very real monetary return on. And um, yeah, so that's, that's how it works. That's that girl. Okay, now that we're done talking about the salon suites and everything, a year in yeah. review. Oh my gosh, you guys, I wanted to tell you about my birthday party. Okay, so on, I just like to finish it out. Feel like I want to tell them about my birthday. Tell them. Okay, so... It's going to be so fun. Ah, okay, so on May 16th, I'm turning 25, and Woo! I've never had a birthday party as an adult. Like, I had birthday parties when I was, like, a kid and when I was a teenager, but as an adult, we always just go out to dinner or something, and I've always been working on my birthday mm-hmm. for the last seven years. That is true. Yeah. Oh, I've taken... I'm still working on my birthday this year. Did you know that? You're crazy. I'm taking clients. But I do... Uh, I, I was like, I should probably do something for my birthday because I'm 25, like quarter century. And so we're throwing a prom. Are you dead? So cute. We're throwing a backyard prom in our backyard. I have prom a DJ. Time. All my friends are buying prom dresses. Everyone's asking their dates. I bought Elliot like a little boutonniere and a corsage. So cute. Um, yeah, I'm wondering who's going to ask me. No one's asked me yet. Yeah, I wonder. But Hopefully I'm, someone. I don't know, but I'm so excited, you guys. And so stay tuned for mid next month. Um, it's going to be so much Invitations fun. Invitations are going out soon. I literally so can't So if wait. you don't get one, you didn't make the cut. If anyone wants to come message me, <laughs> you can come. <laughs> that isn't what if like what if like a hundred people message us? I would be so happy. We couldn't fit that many. Well, they can come for a little bit. Okay. Come if, to my birthday. If you want to come for 15 minute increments, <laughs> uh, let us know. We will give you your start time and your end time. You can pop by. Everyone listening to this is just like my lash friends in other states. So like they, they won't come. Yeah. But like, girl, if any of you want to come to my prom themed 25th birthday party, then message me and I will get you a ticket. Cute. I can't wait. Ah, stay tuned. So I was just on my phone because my friends are dress shopping and they were sending me pictures of their dresses. And so I just wanted to mention it really what? fast. Love Look that. at Claire's dress. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. But isn't it just like mine? That's, it is. It is just like yours. Oh my gosh, that's very Claire though. I'm so Love excited. You guys. And also, I've never been to prom with Elliot because we didn't meet in high school, but I would have yeah. loved to go to prom with you. Yeah. I feel like we, we went to like church prom once. You and I? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, but we didn't know each other. Yeah, we did. Oh, church prom. Yeah, church prom. Oh, we went to that together. We went to that. That yeah, kind of counts. We were adults. 
Yeah. We're still adults. I love prom. I love prom. So, yeah. I'm so really fun. excited, you guys. Can't wait. Um, anything else? I think that is everything, you that guys. That wraps us up. And that's all, babes. And that's all for this episode of Love Island. <laughs> um, Tune in next week. <laughs> To see what these crazy what singles, these, what these sexy hot, what, singles, what these sexy hot smoking sexy singles do get up week. to <laughs> in the in, villa. In the villa. <laughs> Bye, babes. Bye, babes. See you next week. Smooches.